people of Ukraine, the people in Gaza, the people in Lebanon, the people in Sudan. I mean, it just seems to go on forever and ever. It's just awful. So, so, yeah, so we, but, but we can't heal the world at this point, but we can pray for the, our enemies. Jesus said to pray for your enemies. He, he says that's in the Bible. And, and I've always found if you're mad at somebody and pray for them, all of a sudden I kind of get over just a whole ton of stuff, you know. But we pray that Mr. Putin and uh, you can't name them all, but, you know, Ham Hamas, Hezbollah, I mean, it just goes on and on. But there are leaders who could stop this nonsense. Let us live in peace. So let us pray together, Lord, in your mercy. Oh, God, hear our prayers. Pam, I want to hear a joy. My daughter's doing well. Okay, her daughter uh, came through her little exploratory surgery, and there's nothing really wrong, and she's doing well. And she walked, I think, two miles. Two miles. Yeah, so she had it on Friday, and already on Sunday she walked two miles. She's determined to get back, and some of you know Jill. She's um, actually still on the list here. And in one of the oldest, she, Jill joined before Pam did. Oh, that's right. Jill joined before her mother. Yep. So anyway, well, let us give thanks to the Lord. Praise be to God. And I understand you had a really nice time because you got to talk a lot. And we did. We had a nice visit. Just yeah. the two of us. Yeah, just the two of them. Just mom and daughter talking. Isn't that sweet? Especially after, you know, a surgery that was quick and and over with rather than, you know, saying, well, we had to work on her for five hours, you know. So let us give thanks to the Lord for, for all of family. Praise, Praise be to God. Yeah. Kathy Kiefer, uh, who is uh, of the Dutch Flat Church, uh, she already had her heart valves worked on. Friday she just had an in and out. I think it was probably put the pacemaker back in. That's been one of the troubles. Well, she's had bad valves, but but the pacemaker thing was, was uh, infected, so they had to take it out, and now she needs it back in. So I'm expecting Kathy Kiefer to be all perky very soon. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Praise, Praise be to God. God. Yeah, that's nice. Really well. His knee is doing really well. That's Richard, and his knee is, he's, he's getting around. First he got rid of the, does he still have the cane? Nope, no cane. All right, that's good. First he got rid of the walker, then he got rid of the cane, and now he's just walking on the bottoms of his feet. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Praise be to God. Vicky still has one more. Yeah, yeah, and, and tell him if you see, happen to see him again that, that you know, we miss him too. He, Nate is moving closer to his work. You know, he was driving forever, and so he is moving, um, but we will miss him and hope that he finds a church you know, local that is as meaningful as because he he does miss us. No, no. Well, we thrive, we thrive in community. And and we need to remember Bobby Joe too. You know, it, this is not easy for either of them. So that they, uh, well, we know that one of the goals in their life is to remain absolutely sober, and so far they're doing that. And we hope that they can get through the whole snarl of divorce, it's never easy, and that Nate may find a church that puts their arms around him like we did, Lord, in your mercy, oh God, hear our prayers. And Isabella, yes. Oh my. So this is for Carla, who is back, back in the saddle again. Uh, I taught for a hundred years, and I'm not missing it much, but for all the teachers, especially Carla, that are back with kids who have tremendous problems. I don't know I don't know what that's all about, that there are so many kids with these awful problems. Lord in your mercy. God hear our prayers. But for the for all the kids who are doing well in school, happy and couldn't wait to get back and are having a marvelous time and learning new things and excited about their new teacher let us give thanks to the Lord. Praise be to God. Yeah. Ruth Kaga. Just, um, I was just 
Well, of course, you haven't aged a bit. <laughs> well, that's right. Okay, so Ruth is saying that she got to, to visit some of Tom's friends that, that he had from grammar school, and it was really nice, and that is nice, too. You know, we, most of us never met Tom, but we don't want to forget Tom. He is a, a part of Ruth, and that makes him a part of us. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Praise be to God. Carolyn. Okay, so college kid. His name is Joshua. Joshua, yes. And Joshua messed up his knee the second football game. So we need to get that knee fixed. Uh, you know, what is they Tear the ACL. I always hear that. I don't even know if that's part of the knee. But for Joshua, let us uh, hear our... Lord, in your mercy, good grief. <laughs> Boy, do it a zillion times and then... So, uh, just getting old, that's all. Yeah, just getting old. All right, so, anything else? Let's pray. God in heaven, you meet us here, and we can't even really figure out why sometimes. We don't seem to deserve it. We don't do the stuff you want us to do. And yet, You're patient. You're forgiving. And in your grace, help us to forgive ourselves, forgive our enemies, forgive our neighbors with the yapping dog. Turn our faces toward the light, the light of Jesus the light of God and the Holy Spirit. Touch us. Heal us. And continue to love us. And I ask this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture this morning is from Ephesians. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Taking flight. We have this image, you know, the eagle taking flight. And at the end, we're going to sing, God will lift you up 
raise you up on eagle's wings. However, the biblical bird that they were thinking about isn't our beautiful, you know, bald eagle that is on our, on our national things. It's more like a vulture, really, over there. But, but this is an image because it's a big vulture. It's, you know, it has these great birds. And, and you've got to imagine, you know, remember Jesus walked everywhere. Everybody walking around. And you see this bird that can just flap its wings and then it can be on the updrafts just all cool and having a great time up there. Always been a little jealous of the birds, although I don't know whether I'd want to be as smart as a bird. But there you go. That may be more like what they're thinking about, although that one has tags on, so he's a pretty fancy bird. He is bald, more or less, I guess. There's the guy that we like to think of. That's our eagle. Is it he's special? You know, I guess our eagle is better than their eagle. That's a joke. But if you watch those eagles, they're adjusting just that tip of their wing when they're, when they're, you know, when they're hovering or gliding. They're just a little adjustment. It's all it takes out there. They just wiggle that. So you see the one right down here. He's got that one turned up for a second. Just, just an adjustment. Soaring. Taking flight. Taking flight. Well, I don't know if James and Joanna and Hannah can be here by next Sunday, but if they were, we need to be ready, ready to take flight. We're probably going to have a lot of singing, sort of like George did the last time. It's the fifth Sunday, and we're hoping that, uh, that the Lyrical Locos are going to be able to do a uh, little kumbaya up here. And we actually practiced on Friday, and it sounded pretty good. And then we'll sing a lot of songs, joyful songs, songs because we are taking wing. We are taking flight. Now, getting ready for this whole thing, this new pastor thing. There is a little green book, and some of you, I know Jim and Carolyn have been here long enough. Some of you actually worked on this book. It was written by... Robert Snazy, it's called Five Practices of Fruitful Congregations. And you may look at that and go, oh, yeah, I've seen that around. There may be a couple of them in the library. Snazy is a bishop in the Methodist Church. I don't think he's retired yet, but he's probably getting close. But he wrote, he studied five things that he noticed. You know, a bishop has lots of churches. And he's trying to figure out, why is this one so successful and this one's struggling. We're going to work on just the first one today because it's thriving community and all that. You can't read it up there, but it's radical hospitality. Radical hospitality. Now, it, Romans says, Welcome one another, therefore, as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. Do it for the glory of God. Welcome. And, and you know, it goes on. You welcome the stranger. You welcome the uh, immigrant, you welcome the person that's walking in the door that maybe doesn't look like you or doesn't act like you. But our job is to welcome. Because even when we look at somebody and for some reason we think that they are, I don't know, less than us, you have to remember God loves Mr. Putin as much as he loves George Beckman, which just doesn't seem quite right. But that's because I'm not God. God can love without bounds. Name tags. Ooh, David has his on. Oh, George has his on. Pam, do you have yours on? Yeah, I told her she had to. I know, uh, Carolyn can't. Oh, you did? You, oh, aren't you good? Yes, anyway, I know you say, well, why are we wearing name tags? I know who I am, and you know who I am. I don't think James knows Dick. I don't think. Now, he might. Maybe you met him somewhere. 
but I doubt when he walks in, he's going to go, oh, Dick, how you been? You know, so we've got to help this, this man and his wife and his daughter to quickly uh, become one of us. And, and so if you get your name tag, and of course part of the trouble is I walk around with mine like this half the time, which really doesn't help much, does it? Some of them are on little swivels, and it has a 50-50 chance, and 90% of the time it's backwards. Don't forget your name tags. Deuteronomy, this is Old Testament now, it says, You shall also love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. That's in Deuteronomy. You love the stranger because you were. I remember when I walked in here, and I've told you a zillion times, but Dick and Carolyn were... Uh, uh, <sighs> yeah, the other fella, the other Dick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jim, and, and they were greeting, and Jim stuck his hand out, leaned forward, and he, you, he's done it to you, and said, Hi, I'm Jim Flynn. Welcome. Never forgot it. I mean, it just, I don't know, it just, that, it just thought, okay, sat right here with Myrtle, and Ruth said when we started to sing, don't sing too loud, so <laughs> I had to be quiet because some people think I'm kind of a bit of a hunker, and so I, uh, I sat there with Myrtle and, and Rami V., was up here, Rami Velasco, and when he said that, and that's why I use it so much, as high as the heavens above the earth, and he said it, you know, he was a Filipino, and, and the way he said it, there was just a little different emphasis on certain parts of the lines, and I sat there getting mist in the eye and thought, this will do, this will do, and then afterwards Myrtle said, so, are you new or are you, you know, because that's the way Myrtle was, you know, she was, uh, she did not hold back. But I was a stranger and you welcomed me. Ruth was a stranger and they welcomed Ruth. And if you feel like you're new to us, you're one of us. We will accept you so fast you won't be able to believe it. For you also were a stranger. Name tags. Gee, did I say that? It's going to come up several times, my idea, I guess, of... But remember, I taught sixth grade. You have to say it a hundred times, and finally, somebody will say, are we supposed to wear our name tags? And, <laughs> and you think, okay, I think, we're, I think we're getting it. That's why I like sixth grade. You know me. I can't snap my fingers very good anymore, but uh, hey, you know, kids, sit up straight, pay attention. Wear your name tags. Next Sunday would be great, and the Sunday after that, and the Sunday after that. Matthew says, Truly I tell you, just as you did it for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. When you're nice to Cherie, Jesus feels like you're being nice to him. That's what he's saying. Love like I loved. Care like I care. That's thriving in community. Brothers and sisters of mine. Matthew 25, 40. Don't forget, next week we're supposed to do what? Okay, you're getting it. All right, now, in that book, and I know you can't maybe see this, but I'm going to read it to you. In that book, he was talking about radical hospitality. So what happened is there was a woman. The secret has been an active hospitality that became contagious throughout the congregation. For instance, when a visiting mom felt self-conscious whether her baby started to, whenever her baby started to fuss in worship, and met with congregational leaders, that's the pastor of the church, and they decided that they valued having young people so highly that they had to do something to ease the discomfort. To show support for the young mom, they bought a comfortable, well-padded rocking chair and placed it in the back of the church behind the last pew of the small sanctuary. 
Word got around, and soon they had two rocking chairs. And they became the friendliest congregation around. Now, I'm not saying we have to buy rocking chairs, but this is the kind of thing we have to do. We have to pay attention. You know, we have two pews that are indented. That one there needs to go back that way because the idea is if you're in a chair or, or you have, you know, a walker, that's the place where you sit so that you have room for the, for the, the walker. That, that's what we call welcoming the stranger because they may not be as able as we are. So we need to make place for them. It's interesting, we did this in the Madera Church, studied that, and at one time there were three rocking chairs in back, and one Sunday, all three of them had mamas rocking little kids. I don't think they have many kids now, but maybe they forgot to put in rocking chairs. And I'm not, I'm not picking on them, I'm just saying it's only an example of what radical hospitality is. Radical hospitality. Um, we call it the, the parable of the prodigal son. And, and really, um, it's been also mentioned, it should be the, the parable of the radical father. Because the father, remember, gave him all the stuff and he went off and wasted it away. And when he came back, he put a ring on his finger and a robe on him and kept on giving. He kept on giving without bounds, without, without uh, judgment. Oh, I want to also mention that you probably need to find your name tags. Dick, it's somewhere. You don't know. Oh, you do. Oh, Dick knows where it is. Well, that's, I only, I only found this. It's in Grass Valley. It's in Grass Valley. <laughs> well, hopefully next Sunday it'll be here, Dick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and poor Gail needs one. Because, uh, he, well, no, but, but, you know, new pe preacher comes and he'll say, hey, you a piano player, you know, what's, what's, your, what's your name? All right. Galatians in 5, uh, Galatians 5, through 23 says, by contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's no law against such things. That's because Paul was talking about all the stuff that, you, that they shouldn't be doing. And he's saying, now notice it doesn't say fruits with an S. It says fruit. It's one thing that comes from it, and it manifests itself in many ways. In love, of course, we've talked about that. Joy, yeah, we have fun, don't we? We like to be together. Peace. And this place is a peaceful place. Even sometimes when I'm coming in feeling kind of ground down, you know. It's a peaceful place. You look at my eyes and it makes me feel peaceful. I feel like, well, out there it wasn't too good, but as I came in the door, the smiles. Patience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know, uh, I know enough about Ruth Conger when they studied this that um, that can be a little bit of a hang up sometimes now yes she's going moi you know and of course I'm doing the same thing I've never been so patient but as I quoted to you from Sharon uh, I c think I could be more patient if it didn't involve so much waiting you know generosity we do have that we have generosity, but we're talking about coming out of you. Faithfulness. And it's interesting, Paul in Romans says, uh, faith for faith. And, and it, it just, when you read it and you read all these translations, what in the world is he talking about? I'm not sure my take in is you have to be, when you're feeling not faithful, act like it. And it will restore your faith. When you feel like your faith is waning, pretend. Pretend that you have faith. And then it'll start happening again. It's kind of muscle memory. We are faithful. Gentleness. I think Ruth is the one that said these get harder, didn't you, Ruth? As it goes along, you know, to be gentle. I'm picking on her. Gentleness, yes. 
And then here's the real sticker, you know, self-control. You know, I could have better self-control if everybody would just behave better in the world. <laughs> but as we welcome our new pastor and his family, think about the fruit that you have received from this congregation, from the church, and from the Holy Spirit. And then demonstrate it in new and profound ways. Make this family, this pastor, feel like he's plopped himself into part of heaven. We want them to go home and say, This will do. This will do. And we can do that for them. Go home and say, this will do. We do that with open minds, open hearts, and open doors. Our door works better now. We get our hearts open as they always are and get our minds open because it may be different. What if he does things differently? Well, he'll probably have to because he's not the other George and he's not me. How could, how could he? He has never seen us. How could he do things the way they're supposed to be done. He's going to do the best he can. He's going to do what he thinks God is leading him to do. And that's all it takes. So we open our hearts. We open our minds. And we open those doors. Out there. The ones that come in here. And the ones of our heart. And he will say, say it with me. This will do. Say it with me. This will do. That's all you have to give him and his family is that feeling that he didn't drive clear across this country. Days in a car. Two cars, actually, because they have two, so they don't even get to drive together. You know, it's always going to be one in the car alone because there's only three of them. But when they land here, we're going to make their day, make their year, make them feel that God has smiled upon them because this will do. Don't forget your name tags. All right. To God be the glory, verses 1, 2, and 3. You can stand if you want. Now may the sun be warm and kind to you. In the darkest night some, some star shine through. In the dullest morn some radiance brew. And when dusk comes, God's hand to you. May the peace of Christ be with you and with our new pastor and his family 
And the people said, Amen.